<laughs> I've never experienced something that fast in my life. No. Like literally ever. I feel like that, that was is insane. So <laughs> that was insane. And I'm gonna look like an idiot for the rest of time on the internet because of this car. Alright, so today we are reviewing a 2018 Tesla Model S P100D. The special edition. The very special edition. And do you know why it's very special, JT? Because it's real damn quick. It's real quick. I'm so excited. Ever since I we drove that Model 3 and I didn't want to give it back, I've been looking forward to doing this car. The Model S? Yeah. Or specifically the P100D? Specifically the P100D, but also any other Tesla uh -huh. or electric car <laughs> because I thought I was going to hate the Model 3 but yeah. I loved it. Just for reference, the P100D is like the top of the line performance Model S that Tesla makes. Um, it is lightning quick. It has the, besides the Dodge Demon, the fastest factory production zero to 60 time on record of any vehicle. And that's 2.5 seconds, 2.5 right? seconds, zero to 60 time. That is so and fast. Most people think that that is a conservative estimate. So I'm going to hit it a little bit here. Right, let's see what you got. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh. That was just a 40, right? <laughs> Goodbye. We're getting out. <laughs> that was so fast. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't see straight. <laughs> we'll probably never drive something as fast as this, honestly, because even the Dodge Demon, even though it's supposedly yeah. zero to 60 time of 2.3 seconds compared to the 2.5 on this, the Demon, you can only achieve that if it's under like the right circumstances. Yeah. You have to have like the right gas. You have to be at the right track you have to have like the right a, weather yeah the right weather this can run 2.5 seconds like all day all day non-stop without any trouble that i mean i was i braced myself i knew it was going to be quick but oh my goodness i can see everything below are you ready jt <laughs> yes so all right three two one Whoa. oh oh I would. I did my very best not to turn into a small turtle. Let's do a replay of that. Look how look how scared I am. I was, like I was looking at the the man, speedometer. I like that fast was, cars. I like them. I don't know if I like that. My heart is yeah. like really beating from that. It, this it's wow. one of those things where you know you're driving a fast car and it fe yeah it feels fast and you're having fun, but it's not. It doesn't feel like you're being pulled. This feels like you're just being just being dragged faster than you can possibly keep up. That was yeah. It is incredible. It's classy looking. Yeah. I think it looks very classy it's on the a, outside. It's a good looking business sedan. It's a good looking car that's not too flashy yeah. for what it is. You couldn't really tell the difference between this and any other Tesla Model S, in my opinion. Yeah. The only way you can really differentiate it is if you see the P100D badge yeah. on the back. But even then, like only- It's subtle. It's subtle and only car people or people who know it will know it. Yeah. Yeah, everything about this car, it's, it's understated, it's classy. Um, it's got a teeny tiny little ducktail spoiler, a little carbon fiber spoiler. Yeah, that spoiler. is kind of a little goofy. Yeah, I like it. It's not, it's, they know what they're doing. It's a little sporty touch, but this is, it stays true to its business sedan roots. Speaking of the carbon fiber, I do like this is moving a little bit into the interior, but there is carbon fiber all over yeah. this interior. You've got some on the dash here. You've got some on this little cup holder Heidi thing. You can definitely feel more sporty in this than in a base uh, Model S. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think the biggest thing you notice right away is the gigantic. That thing is enormous. The gigantic tablet in the middle of the console. Yeah. Is nuts. I would say it's goofy looking, but it fits right into this car. It does. Um, it just, it's cool because it just kind of like hovers yeah. out um, into the center and you can control so much. We're almost in a video game mm -hmm. driving this and having this giant map. That's enormous. Um, yeah. It's like an RPG, like I'm playing Skyrim. It's like a Skyrim map. Yeah. Uh, what else on the interior? Uh, the heads-up display or like the dashboard is yeah. really, really cool. 
Um, first off, it shows you vehicles that are driving by you, and it's so damn smart. Mm -hmm. um, it even showed when a motorcycle drove by me, it showed a motorcycle. That's great. And that's such a small little touch. But I thought it was so cool. But that's so that's like that's important to know where motorcyclists are around you. Yeah. And the fact that it can even identify them, that says a lot to what Tesla's done. Yeah. And you were saying when you were parked earlier and there were three cars in front of you, yes. it showed you those I was, three cars. I was at a red light and I was sitting behind three cars and it showed me three cars. That's crazy. In front of me. I don't know how does it, it detects that. Does it maybe estimate the, the distance between you and the stop? Well, how I do you know the stop? No light? idea. That's cool. Tesla. I really don't know how it Tell does. Us. It's magic. Yeah. It's just black magic. That is so cool. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. I am very, very impressed with how Tesla have integrated all this tech into their cars. Comfort-wise on the interior, very nice. It's all right. Ooh, all right. I think it's all right. Yeah. I think the interior of this is okay. Again, yeah. you have to factor in how much this costs. Yeah. This costs, brand new, around $120,000. That's expensive. Which is pricey, and there are... Like I said with the Model 3, Mercedes and yeah. Audi just do interiors better than Tesla yeah. for the same price point or even less. Uh, they are more luxurious, they are made out of nicer materials. But you don't get that acceleration. But you don't get the acceleration and you don't get the Tesla hype. It's got some gimmicky features, I'll say that. I don't like- Like what? I don't like this thing, this, this, <laughs> this, this cup holder thing. Yeah, I was struggling with that. There's a ton of resistance pushing this cup holder thing back, this cover. Um, and then to close it, you have to you just push it and it comes down by itself. I kind of like that. That's cool. But yeah. uh, I don't know. If I'm tired in the morning and I just want to put like a cup of coffee there or something, like, I don't want to struggle with my car. Shoving it. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I like the, uh, the back seats mm -hmm. are very spacious. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely fit four people in this comfortably. Yeah. I like that you have a USB plug-in ports in yeah. the back. Uh, so you're rear passengers can charge phones or devices or whatever that else. That should be standard in every car. It really, it really should on. be. You can also fit at least one human in the trunk. <laughs> uh, we tested that. Possibly two. Possibly two. I fit in there. Um, and it is a hatchback. Yeah, it is a hatchback. I love hatchbacks. Uh, and that makes it a little bit more practical too. You get you get some more storage space. You can fold the rear seats down. You also have the frunk. Yeah, you've there's, got the frunk. There's a pretty significant amount of cargo space yeah. in this. You can't fit a person in the frunk. I mean, a full grown person. You could fit a young person. I couldn't fit in the frunk. Last time we, uh, we just did the acceleration where I, I just hit the pedal. We didn't have it in launch control or anything like that. This time, we're actually going to put it into launch control. And there's a secret way to do there that. There is a secret way. So while Joe, you're driving, I'm gonna do this for us. So what you do, you hold on ludicrous on acceleration for five seconds. And then the screen goes warp speed here. All right, and then it pops up a little, little box here that says, are you sure you wanna push the limit? This will cause accelerated wear of the motor, gearbox, and battery. You got two options. Yes, bring it on, or no, I want my mommy. I really want to push no. We're not pushing no. Uh, We're pushing yes, bring it on. All right. Excuse me a moment while I brace myself. All right, so what you do is you put you put one pedal on the brake, right? Oh yeah, you push the brake all the way down, push the accelerator all the way down, and then it should say... Both pedals pressed. Are you pushing all the way down on the brake? Yes. All the way down on the accelerator? Oh, there we go, all right. Did it change over? Yeah, all right. When I let go of the brake, it's gonna go off. Are you ready? Now let go of the, let go of the accelerator. Launch mode enabled. There it is. Okay, so you All have right. to wait for that to pop up. So now I push on the and gas you, again. Now you push on the gas again. And when I let go of the brake, it's gonna go. It's gonna go. Oh my god. I'm gonna look really All right, freaking here brave. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry, pedestrians, don't mind us. They're gonna call the cops. That's the second time we've done that. They're just like. <laughs> Okay, the question that I want to, to have answered by the end of this episode is, is this too much acceleration? No. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I will say if you are planning on taking this out on a track, you would have a better time taking something that's more, something that's gasoline powered. Yeah. Because the problem that Teslas have right now, from my knowledge at least, is they struggle on tracks because they overheat quickly. Yeah. So if you take this, even though it's fast and it handles well, if you take it out on a track a lot, it's gonna overheat quickly. Yeah, there's a reason you don't really see Teslas on tracks. 
I remember this car is like science fiction in a lot of ways because I remember, I forget what James Bond movie this is. It was with Pierce Bronson. Brosnan. Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan <laughs> shows what I know. Yeah. It was Pierce Brosnan and it was, ah, I forgot what it was, but like he has a car and he controls it with his cell phone. The remote control for your car. Tap twice. One, two. Now. Draw your finger very slowly across the pad to drive the car. But you can do that with this now. That's so great. You can control so much with your phone. This really is. It's like a car out of Tron or something. Uh, you have, at least this model has a very nice sunroof mm -hmm. that almost makes it feel like a convertible. It's so big. It's giant. So it's All got right. two modes. You've got vent, which just cracks it up a little bit. Oh, uh, that's what we had. Okay. And then you've got, actually, you've got a couple. You've got 75% open, and then you can put it back all the way. Let's put it back all the way. That's, that's so cool. So you can cool. just you you slide, slide it. it. Yeah. Oh, man. This is lovely. I know. This is actually really pleasant with the sunroof. Yeah, you don't get buffeted, but you get the breeze. And you get the smell, too, the open the, air. The outside. You do get, like, an open air, cool breeze coming in. So I'm, I'm just um, playing with the modes right now. I've got an acceleration in sport, steering mode in standard. Standard, you can definitely feel the steering wheel's a little bit looser, uh, which is nice. It does, these these aren't just for show, they do work. I'm gonna put it in comfort mode now. Oh yeah, that's nice. So you put that in comfort in the acceleration and chill. Yeah. And this just becomes like a nice cruise. That's a nice cruising car. Yeah, it just becomes a nice cruiser. Let's see about that. Yeah, that acceleration That's is still not... still reasonable. It's reasonable. It's quick. It's not lightning. No. I just love how, like, this car can be so many different things, and you just have to change the, the software. Many hacks. You just have to program it to whatever it. you want. Then it's so easy to do. You don't have to take it into a shop to, like, get it tweaked or anything. You just change that. Yeah. I'm sold. Yeah. I'm totally, totally sold on this. I wonder if we're going to have a new highest rated car. Because you can, you can take this and you can blast past bicyclists when they're in your way. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just enjoy a lovely afternoon cruising around. We are ready to rate this car. And the first thing we're going to start with is performance. 10. Which I would agree is yeah. a 10. The uh, acceleration is just so insane. It is certainly alone, I think gives it that 10 but the handling and the just the curb yeah the capabilities of this whole car is phenomenal yeah and you can tweak it too you can you can lower you can raise it you can adjust it how you like and it's it's just perfect yeah no complaints there yeah quality six and a half yeah i think i'd go with uh i think i'd go with that same too six and a half because it's good it's not stellar it's acceptable it's not stellar. It's nothing like Mercedes or Audi. We'd have to do like a, another episode of this car. I know. There's so much we haven't touched there on. There is, there is autopilot, which I forgot to even mention until right now when it came up. Yes, there is autopilot on this. You can get it and it works. And yeah, it's and it's great. great. Everything about this car is great. So yeah, that, that factory. Yeah. So that's going to come into the cool factory coming up soon. But first off, before we get to there is value. $120,000. $120,000. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's big money. So, eh, it's, I think it's kind of debatable. Like, it's definitely very fun, very fast, but you can get cars for less money than that. That are still very fun. That are still very fun, and you can get cars for less than that that have nicer, more luxurious yeah. cabins. So, the value is a little questionable for me. Despite that, this accelerates faster than multi million dollar hypercars. Do. That's crazy. This goes faster. This accelerates 260 faster. So when you look at it that way, when you compare it to the competition yeah, in that, terms of that's, value, that value is high. It's high. But for the average person, I'm gonna I'll give it a seven. That's what I was thinking too, actually. Yeah. Exactly a seven. Right on, boy. So coming up next is the cool factor, which um, looks not. I mean, nothing super special. It's a nice looking car, but yeah, no one people don't turn their heads when they people, see one less. No, nobody. This does not get a lot of attention. No. Which is arguably a good thing. Yeah. So I don't know, like it's cool for us and it's cool for car people or people yeah. who know what it is, but your everyday average person who looks at this won't think it's cool unless they sit in it. Yeah, once and you know sit what in it is. and feel it, then it's cool. Yeah, 
So I don't know. I'd probably give this cool factor like not a super high score. I'd probably give it a six. Nice. I was gonna give it the same thing. Oh man. All right, and that takes us into fun factor, which is almost undeniable. I have not yeah. had a smile on my face as big or lasting as long in anything I've ever driven. I wouldn't ever. describe my my facial expression as smiling. <laughs> But yeah, it's a lot of fun despite it being really scary when you're in ludicrous mode, so. I think it's a 10. Wow, a 10. I think it's a 10. Um, Nothing has ever given me that much of a smile. Personally, I think I would have to reserve 10s for, for like properly manual cars because I think that's a part of the experience for me. It's, it's more fun like to row your own gears as I word. guess, but you'll never go as fast. You won't go as fast. No, I'm, I'm fully aware that they're not, <laughs> like they're old school now. They're not as, technologically advanced and they can't go as fast as like dual clutch automatics or like, right hey there you go hey you gave us a, a thumbs up for a tesla i'm gonna give it a nine all right for me finally takes us to practicality which i also think is high um it's an electric car yep and it gets over 300 miles and it's a hatchback and it's a hatchback and you can fold the back seats down and you can and fit you a have small child in the yeah, front and you have uh, space in the front the only thing that I would maybe dock it for is road trip ability, like yeah. taking it and uh, stopping and charging. But still, generally quite practical. I'd give it a, a six, I think, which sounds low. I was gonna say, that seems a little low. Okay, a six, a 6.5. I'd give it a 6.5 I think on practicality. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. I, think it, I do think it deserves a, a pretty high score for practicality. The only thing I wouldn't necessarily do right now is a road trip. Our average score together is, for the Tesla Model S P100D 2018, uh -huh. is a 39.75 out of 60. 39.75, that's high. About So roughly 40. That's not the highest we have, is it? I believe it is. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Wow. Barely though. I think, it's, I think we rated this barely higher than the i8. Oh. Wow, all right, so we do have a new highest car. Yeah. Coming into it, I don't know if I would have thought that, but man, after driving it, this car is amazing. Well, I don't think we're gonna have a car that can top this performance-wise for quite a while. Probably not. But hopefully we'll have something just as cool next week. So if this is your first time watching, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Yep, cheers. What the heck is that? Ow. Come on. Ow. Okay. Stop moving. Get right here. A little more. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, um, there's something wrong with this engine. There's something stuck in there. I, yeah, I can't, is there? Can you look right there? Oh, He's, no, no, you're right. Yeah, no, I see there's something weird. Here, help me with this, what? okay? What? I'm going to pull here. You grab this. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Uh, on three. Uh, okay. One, two, three. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.